everybody, Samantha here with Boho Dreamer Studio and today I'm going to be working on a custom dog portrait. This is the dog I'm going to be painting. I liked this face with his tongue sticking out. I wanted to have a little bit of his body in the painting so I'm going to kind of combine the two of these images. That's why I've printed them both out but this is what I'm working on. I'm going to be doing it on a 12 by 12 wrapped canvas so it's just a smaller canvas I'm gonna work on the tabletop rather than on the easel to begin with so I can go ahead and work on my edges as I go along as well and so I'm gonna get started all right you guys I have sketched out my dog right here and I have already put all of my paint on my palette so she wants to have like a dark teal type background and then the black and white of course for the dog's fur but then there's going to be some brown and different undertones as well so that's what this is for all right i always start with my background so that's what i'm going to do this time as well if you all have watched my pig painting tutorial then I used similar colors in that background except I added some pink to it as well but if you want to go back and watch that one I will link it right now I'm using my palette knife. I use my palette knife for just about everything. I'm a big fan of palette knife painting. Just very softly layering my paint. I'm going to bring in my other shade of blue. And when I am touching these colors together, I'm doing it very lightly because I'm not trying to necessarily blend the colors as much as I'm trying to lay them on top of each other. Some blending will occur. But I am trying to have a very soft, light hand. For the most part, I'm keeping my palette knife moving in the same direction. I want my strokes all to be 
upward for this particular background or vertical. I want all my strokes to be vertical for this particular background. Sometimes I add in some horizontal movement as well and I might change my mind but as of right now it's kind of what I'm going for. Okay, I'm going to bring in this other shade of blue now. I've not used this combination before, but I'm actually, I think I really like how these shades blend together. That's really pretty. So this color that I'm applying right now is Skyline by Folk Art. The other color I just applied is Deep Blue Sea by Anita's. And then I used a turquoise green by Master's Touch. If you want to get the exact shades that I'm using, then you can purchase all of those at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to go back and add a little bit more of my darker turquoise. Very, very light pressure because you can see if I push just a little too hard, it's picking up the paint and I don't want it to do that. I'm going to let that dry some and then I'm going to start working on the body. All right, we are back to finish up the dog. So I'm going to start with a little bit of undertone. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this shade just so the white isn't so pure white. We want to show a little bit of variation. So this right now is dark titanium white by Master's Touch. I'm going to add just a tad bit of brown, just very slight here and there. Again, I'm just trying to do a little bit of an undertone. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with my white. The acrylic paint that I'm using is a thicker paint, so it works really well with a palette knife. It works really well when you're trying to create texture. So I'm working on the body first and then I'm going to go back and work on the face. Even on my sides of the canvas, I like to wrap the painting image. Around to the sides. So I'm going to create that same 
look on the edges here. I just think it makes it look a little bit more finished than if you were just to paint the edges a solid color. Same thing for the side here. So I'm just laying it on really thick, adding lots of texture. This is fur, so obviously fur has a lot of texture to it. Right now I'm going to do the same thing for the face here, just working on the white areas right now. Adding my undertone. Just a tad bit of the brown. All right, then I'm going to come back in with my white. Now the hair on the dog's face is overlapping the hair on the dog's body. So you want to make sure that you create that look in the painting as well. So it looks realistic and 3D. I'm pulling just a tad bit of black through here as well. Add some shadow. Under the nose in my photograph, there is more black showing, so I'm going to do a little bit more of that. Just around the mouth. All right, I'm going to move on to my black, but I'm going to leave the white on my palette knife and just add a little bit of black because this is going to kind of create a gray undertone because the black isn't solid black you have some highlights in the fur so i want to have those highlights And then if you end up covering it up too much with your black, you can always go back in with your gray highlights again later. I just want to lay it on pretty thick. 
This black hair kind of overlaps the white hair a little bit. They mix in together. I want to bring in a little bit more of the gray. Right, I'm going to work on the face. I'll start with the ears because it appears that the hair on the face overlaps the ears a little bit more. So I want to create that effect. So I'm going to start with the hair that is underneath first. This particular dog, I'll show you the picture again. This particular dog doesn't have any white in its ear, but you can just see a little bit of that highlight. And so the white is up here at the center top of the head. So I don't want to get too much white in here and make it look like the fur is white. I just want it to highlight. Same thing over here. All right, and now I'm going to work on the black part of the face. I'm just mixing my black and white paints to get the gray. I'm not using any additional paint or shades or colors. I just mix those to get the desired color. When working around these smaller areas, you have to be really careful with the direction that you put your knife. And so you just gotta work with it. And if you get paint somewhere that you don't want it, just let it dry and then go back and fix it later. So. Not a big deal. It's the great thing about acrylic paint is that you can always paint over it. See, I'm using the tip of my knife. I'm having to turn my hand in order to use the tip in this area right here. You have more control with the tip than you do 
with the other side where the handle is because you don't have that fine point. Now I still want this to be an abstract dog so I'm not trying to make it look too realistic with the fur, too fine showing each individual hair. Like it's just going to be kind of a clumpy hair look, but that's what I want. So I like the abstract look of paintings. I'm going to take this black up just a little bit because in the photograph I just showed you, you do see a little bit of black at the top and then the white will just overlay it. So that's what I want to create here. going to bring it down and then the white will go over top. Now the gray in the nose, see how much grayer it is than the rest of the fur? So I'm going to go back in. You can see it in this photo as well. There's some more gray and then gray right above the mouth under the nose. So I want to add a little bit more of that. And then also in this photo, you can see that there is some white hairs coming through or some gray hairs. The highlights are a little bit better in this picture than in this one because this was an indoor photo and this was an outdoor photo. So actually I'm going to go back in and add a little bit more gray to this as well. Then in the photo, I'm noticing that the hair on the face right here has some gray that comes down long. I'm going to lighten this a tad as well. I'm mixing just a lighter shade of gray right here. I think I'm going to mix it in with my tan so it's not so gray. It's got a little bit of a brown hue to it. A little more white. There's a few places where I want to add this. I'm actually going to add a little more brown. And a hair more of white. go back in with my white and so that gray I just added I'm taking some of it back out and making it look like more of a shadow or an undertone as opposed to laying it on top I'm going to do the same thing here. I don't want it to be so incredibly dark. I'm 
Now, if you really want to take out more of the gray or the brown undertones, you just wait for it to dry. Because right now, it's even though I'm very light-handed, it's still blending those colors together and bringing those shades in. All right, I'm going to work on the hair right here on top of the dog's head. And I'm just bringing in my undertone. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to clean off my knife so I have a clean knife to do this. I'm just laying this initial color down with my palette knife, but it's a really small area, so this is something I think I'm going to actually go and use my brush. It's easier to control and make sure I don't get the fur on the nose. Okay. The dog's tongue is sticking out in the photo, so I am just gonna do the outline of the mouth. You see some black. If you want to do a thinner line, you can just wet your brush and water down the paint some. That way it'll glide more and you don't have to apply as much pressure and you can do a thinner, a thinner line. I'm also going to work on the eyes. The eyes are very dark. So I don't want to lose them. I want the painting to show eyes. I want it to show life. But at the same time, his eyes are very dark and his fur is dark around his eyes. So you have to be careful with how you do this part. I'm touching up some of my strokes around the nose with this brush and then that'll give me some of the color I need to create the eye. But I want you to really see this dog's eyes so I'm going to lighten this up. There isn't any blue in the dog's eyes at all, but I'm going to add just a little bit of this skyline, just a tad.
And then I'm going to do the same thing to the nose because I want there to be a highlight on the dog's nose. Now it's hard to see in this picture right here, but the, not, the nose holes are darker. This one is a little bit easier, but it's not the right angle. So I'm having to go off of this picture for the shape, but I want to give it more of this appearance when it comes to the color. So for the tongue, I'm going to use this rosy mauve and this terra coral. Some of the black where I had done the outline of the mouth is blending in with my pink, but I actually want it to do that because it adds some of that shadow to the tongue. Because the tongue isn't going to be a solid pink. You're going to have highlights, you're going to have shadows, you're going to have shape. And so that black really helps to do that. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and then come back and finish it here in just a little bit. All right, you guys, I'm back and I think my painting is dry enough to continue. I'm gonna go back in and add some more white. So part of that includes adding some more white to the hair up here so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna just start pulling it in so now that it's dry the white is really laying down i'm not blending anymore it's just straight out layering on top of the gray paint that's dried. All right, I'm going to touch up down here some. I don't want to have quite as much gray showing. Just a little. And this is going to overlap the mouth some. Overlap the tongue. I'm going to bring my brush in to clean that up. I do want to cover some of this black that I had done earlier. It's just too much. That looks better already. Right here at the mouth.
For the eyes, I'm going to add a little bit of brown. I do want to be able to tell the difference between the eye and the fur and you know, be able to make it really pop. might be a little too big so I'm gonna go back in And here's our dog. So what do you think of the little Shih Tzu? He turned out pretty cute, didn't he? So I hope you guys were able to follow along with this tutorial and paint a version of your own. I would love to see it. And make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel so that you can see when new videos are posted and keep up with everything that's happening with Boho Dreamer Studio. And I will see you next time. See ya!